Are you struggling with editing your real estate photos? Well, on today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna tackle. Stick around. Hey, what's up everyone? Aaron Bowman here. Thanks for coming by and checking out another video. Now, like I said, today's video is gonna be about editing real estate photos. So maybe you're new, maybe you wanna take your own photos like I did, maybe you're just a little bit of a control freak like I am and figured you could do a better job than somebody else and you wanna learn a new skill. Well, this video is gonna help you take those bad photos and make them look good, as good as possible. And you're gonna really get that polished professional look when all said and done. Doesn't matter what you're using, whatever equipment you have to take photos with, whether it's a point and shoot, a digital SLR, a micro four thirds like I'm shooting on now, or your cell phone. I'm gonna show you some of the tips and tricks that I use to edit photos to get that polished look. So let's jump on the computer and get right into this. All right, now we are on the computer and let's get into some editing. So like I said, if you're struggling with editing your photos, maybe you're not sure where to start. Maybe you just wanna get really good photos from your camera on your phone and you want to edit them for social media. We can do all that with this program and this is Luminar 4.2. Now, I started back when Luminar was in version three and I did some videos on this and some well, I guess the basics really haven't changed. This is the spots you find everything in when it comes time to editing your photos. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you head on over to wherever your file folders are, You know, search through your computer, add them. And then once you get the photos that you wanna edit, we're gonna just click on this edit tab up here. And this is where it kind of gets a little bit different than the previous versions of Luminar. Now, down on the bottom, you will see some of the presets. And as you're going through and editing a photo, if you get to a spot where you're editing it and you're like, I want this look across the rest of the photos, all you have to do is click save new look. And it won't let me do it now because I haven't edited the photo yet. But you will click on new look type in the name of the look and save. And then down here are all your different uh, presets or Luminar looks. And then they have some other ones here that you can get from their site. So first things first, what we're gonna do is make sure we are on the essentials tab and we're gonna go right to the light. Now, actually what I'm gonna do before I even do any of that is I'm gonna crop this picture in a little bit. Uh, all these photos were taken on a Panasonic Luminex G7 with a seven to 14 millimeter lens. Now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it as free and I just really kinda of wanna bring up the yard a little bit to there. Maybe get that barn out of there because I really want the focus to be on the house. Yeah, we'll call it that. And then all you're gonna do is hit done. Now, in the crops, there's, I should have shown you this, there are presets that you can go to. So if you're going here, you can do the original. This is a seven by five. And then they have Facebook color covers or Facebook feeds, or you can enter in your own. So we'll hit done. And now we can start editing this photo. Now, the first things I wanna go to is the light. And I normally don't touch the temperature or tint unless it's inside. And I usually forget to do my white balance and it's too, orangey in color. This one I shoot most, as I shoot all my stuff is in a flat profile, so I can come back and color grade it later. And I also shoot in raw, which just basically means that a lot more data is there as opposed to the JPEG where it compresses a lot of the information and it's a lot harder. Well, it's not harder to edit, but think of a JPEG file with your cell phone. As soon as you take the photo, it pretty much comes out and it's good to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the smart contrast, usually to about 15, somewhere around there. I'm gonna bring my highlights down. I'm gonna bring my shadows up to really lighten up the photo. Then I'm gonna click on advanced settings. You can play with the S curve if you want to, but I'm not gonna get into that today. I'm trying to keep this as short and as simple as possible. And then we're gonna bring down the whites. And this is how I start 99.9% .9 of my photos. So see if I bring up the blacks too much, it's gonna be blown out. Now we'll go right about there. And then this one is great, the AI enhanced. And we're gonna go here and just kick this up a little bit and it already looks better. And you can see here now that the sky enhancer is uh, illuminated. If it wasn't, it would just stay like that. If there was no sky, when I click over it, it wouldn't change. So I'm gonna obviously change this sky out a little later because it's just blue, but if I wanted to keep the original sky, I can crank up the sky enhancer and it'll make it blue. So, so far we've gone from that to this, which 
isn't so bad. Now the structure AI is going to make it a little bit more punchy, add that HDR look to it. And I will show you what I mean here. So let's just say I'm going to do a 13, I'm going to crank that boost up. Now you can see how it's kind of crazy looking. Um, that's not the style I go for with my photos, but I will put a little bit in there just for good sake. Now color, usually I just play with the uh, saturation, um, just a little bit, maybe a little vibrance. And then uh, let's see, you come down here to the detail uh, enhancer. I'm just going to sharpen the overall image. We can get maybe into the small details and a little bit of the larger details and uh, just a little bit on each. And then I'm going to go into denoise. There's really not much to denoise here. Photo is pretty decent, so we're just going to leave that off. And then I go into landscaping. Now, here's a couple of things that you're going to like. Now, depending on when you take the photo, if you're not at what they call the golden hour, you can then just come in here and crank up that golden hour a little bit. And now see how it makes that nice, like, oh, the sun's in the right spot. But we don't need to do all that. Just a little bit. We're not going to get crazy. Now, if we had foliage, if there was foliage on the trees, this is really good in the fall, it would darken that it would lighten that up so you can see if you watch the trees right here in the front of the bushes see how it makes them a little bit brighter but that's really not helping us we want to make this grass a little bit greener and i'm going to show you how to do that and that's going to be going over to uh let's see the you know, we don't want to color styles we're going to go over to pro we're going to go over to color enhance we're going to go down to advanced settings now if you wanted to you could um you know, you could uh, make another layer that you're going to just color. But for uh, to keep this as simple as possible, this is just pretty much how I'm going to do it here. Um, so as I said, I want to should have gone back here and done it this way. And we're going to go into color here. And what we want to do is we want to go down to edit mask and we're going to brush actually you know what it's going to be better if we do it this way it'll make more sense i think so we're going to go color enhancer we're going to go edit mask we're going to go brush then we want to make sure we go up here and we hit this little eyeball so we're going to see what we're going to brush make sure it's on paint we don't want to take anything away and then we'll bring that down just a little bit so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to paint this whole front just like that and you can see the red areas are now the only areas that are going to be affected by this mask and then come in here and drop my brush size down a little bit more and get these trees the best i can now obviously if i was doing this for a finished product i would be taking a little more time to be a little more careful around the edges and for me i'm just trying to get the point across here for you guys you know, this part can be a little um, taxing. It is actually a lot easier to use some of these settings when stuff is already green and we're not trying to bring the green out of it. Or if it's the fall time and you're in a state like uh, I am here in Connecticut in New England where we get a lot of seasons and a lot of changing. So, all right, let's, I think that's good. Um, let me see here. Yeah, just make sure it's nice and dark through here. And make sure you didn't miss anything now what's going to happen is i'm not messing with those trees back there but now i'm just going to hit done and now watch when i'm down here and i'm messing around with these colors so say the brilliance it's only messing with that section that's painted so if i want to be warmer maybe a little bit cooler i'm going to kick that up um and play with the color contrast so the best thing I would say is to get in there and kind of play with these a little bit to see which each one does um, when you're going through it. But what I want to get down to is here and bring the, uh, where am I? Nope. Uh, bring this up. Maybe not too much out there. Bring this down to the green. See how it makes it a little bit greener when we come to the cool side, but still not enough. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. Oh, look at that. Just a little bit of the magenta in green makes that brown look so much better, right? Now, we don't obviously want to go like that. I think that's a little overkill. You want to kind of keep it as natural looking as possible. 
And I don't think we need to really mess with the reds. So we'll bring down the red cayenne just a little bit. And uh, yeah, now we'll just bring that back to zero. So if you want to, you can also type in the, the number that you want. So that's the detail or that's the color enhancing under the pro section. Now we're not going to worry about portraits on this. So you can already see before, after, how much different it is already. And I'm, we haven't even been at it this that long. And it can get a lot easier the more you do it. So the next we want to go over to is creative. Now creative, we can add sun rays. We can add more of a dramatic look and make a little more um, uh, of a matte finish to it. But what I want to look at is the sky replacement and the AI augmented sky. Now AI augmented sky is now the newest addition to the AI part of of uh, Luminar 4.2. I think it might even be 4.3 is what we're in. I'd have to double check. Um, but uh, it's in Luminar 4, whatever it is when you download it, this is uh, what it will be in. And what we're gonna do is, let's say we wanna replace the sky here. Now, I'm not gonna mess with any of this stuff here. We're just gonna leave it the way it is. If for some reason it gets a little hokey and you know it messes up with the trees, there's things you can do by going through here and playing with the settings. But like I said, I wanna keep this as simple as possible for anybody who's just getting into photography or is just starting to take photos of their own property because maybe they're brand new to real estate and we all know it's very expensive to get into and maybe they don't have the money for, you know, to hire a professional photographer to come out and they've got, you know, their first listing and or maybe they're just gonna start practicing so they can do it on their own. Or maybe you're just like me and a little bit of a control freak and wanna be able to make sure the photos come out right. So anyways, what we're gonna do is they have all these different presets here. You can load your own custom sky, you can download new sky images, but let's say we just want a dramatic sky one. We're gonna click on it, it's gonna process it down here and then presto changeo, that's the new skyline for your house. Kind of cool and it does it really, really fast. Now, a couple things you have to be mindful of if you're doing like a sunset, the sun is actually setting on the other side of this photo, so I couldn't use anything like this. It really wouldn't make sense, and it would take a lot for me to go through and edit this so you didn't have the sun beating on the house like it is now, as opposed to the sun being over here. So that's why I would stay with probably some of the other ones that are more of a natural looking um, skyline for this house. And then it's just really coming in and picking out which which one you want the most or which one you like. And if you like the original, the original. Now I kind of like that one there. And then what you can do is you can actually do an augmented sky. So let's say I wanted to add birds. Once it's done processing, we now have some birds flying over the house. Now say I want to move that object. I'm going to hit right down here where it says place object. And I'm just going to move them to wherever I want on the photo, but I really don't want, and then just hit place object again so it locks it in. Let's say I want some balloons. Maybe I want a hot air balloon. Now, to me, that looks a little bit hokey, but I can see the um, where you could use that in something. Maybe I wanted to add some more clouds to the photo. I can do something like that. Um, the mountains only certain pictures i've gotten to work really well so yeah see that doesn't really look that natural it's kind of cool how you can edit it but again you'd have to come in here and finesse this a lot to make it look right and there's only been a couple photos without a lot of work that i've made it you know gotten it to look the way it, it should and then you know obviously we can place the object if we need to bring it down put it more behind the house um something like that you know, you could do it where it would look maybe a little more natural. But anyways, we don't want any augmented sky stuff in here. So we're just going to get rid of that. But that is one of the features that is on there. Now, to me, this is a pretty good looking photo. This is definitely something I can use. I might go back and play around with the lights, the highlights, maybe the contrast a little bit, maybe the exposure, because maybe it looks a little bit dark. Um, that's definitely too bright. So maybe something like that. But as you can see, we can see the before and after you know it's definitely definitely better than what we started with and that's how i pretty much edit my photos now if we wanted to we wanted to go jump inside 
we can jump inside and take a look at one of the photos here for the kitchen. And for me, it's going to be pretty much done the same way. I'm going to come into the uh, essentials part here of Luminar 4. I'm going to kick up the contrast a little bit, bring down the highlights so it takes some of the overexposure out of the window there. Bring up the shadows, bring down the whites, and bring up the blacks, maybe a little bit more of the whites. So the overall, yeah, a little more on the contrast. See how it separates it? It's not so blah looking. And then I'm going to hit the AI Enhance, crank that up, and then go into the struck, the color, a little bit like that. And then it's really just getting in and figuring out what you like or what your style is going to be. And if for whatever reason I wanted to do this, I could save this as a new look, type it in there, hit save, and then you're going to see it populate down here. Now, let's just say I wanted to go to something more of a lifestyle. And here's some lifestyle photos. So if we're doing food, photo for the fixer, um, day at the beach. And let me see how some of these look. So here's one beautiful sunset it doesn't necessarily mean you have to use it for a sunset or a day at the beach but it's going to adjust it and those are presets and you can put that across all your photos so that is it in a nutshell that is how i edit my photos in luminar 4.2 and really what i wanted to do is just kind of show you if you're new or if maybe you were thinking of using luminar 4 the layout because things are definitely different than luminar 3 on here and uh if you're looking to get this product, I do have links down below. They are affiliate links. I'd appreciate it if you use them. That would be super awesome. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will answer them as they come in. And if there's something you want to see done with this, let me know. I'd be more than happy to... Uh, to do a video for you for that but basically i just wanted to show you all how i edit my real estate photos how you can do it easily and then the really last really important thing that i want to make sure that you see one little bonus tip here is when you are exporting photos out of here because of the size of the photo you don't want to export it actual size especially if you're going to be using it on uh facebook instagram or anything like that and you can use png or jpeg but what you want to do is you want to go to the long end and make this to a thousand when you export it because then it'll be a small enough image or a small enough data size to where you'll be able to upload it and use it as thumbnails and certain things online especially for the mls listings i know when i was exporting them in the full actual size i was getting issues with uh, getting them uploaded to the MLS. So thanks a lot for watching. I will see you on the next video. Please consider liking, subscribing, and uh, have yourself a great week, weekend, month, or whenever you're watching this. Just uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you real soon.